As a teacher, have you ever wanted your students to be more focused and engaged in your classroom? As a learner, have you ever wanted learning to be more fun, interactive and engaging? Imagine teaching your class in a three-dimensional virtual world where the only limit is imagination. And not only that, this world has over 100 million users worldwide already engaged. This is what Minecraft offers you. Minecraft is an open-ended sandbox style game. It's been referred to as digital Lego, but from experience, and obviously Scott's experience, we can tell you that it's so much more. It's been used to create a multitude of things, from amazing landscapes to brilliant architectural creations, from functional 10-digit calculators within the game to fully-fledged functioning games within the game. Put this into an educational context, and you can have learning about any subject area, from languages to science and maths to art. So, what can Minecraft do in your classroom? The first thing Minecraft can do is massively increase student engagement. And to talk about this, I'm going to share a story about Kelvin. Kelvin's a typical 14-year-old boy in Year 8 maths classroom. He can concentrate for about five minutes, and that's about it. And once Kelvin is distracted, he really struggles to get back on task. So here we are in the classroom. The class is learning about area and perimeter, the key skills, calculating these and applying them in a real life situation. Typically speaking, we give the class a worksheet. They complete it, we collect it, we grade it, we return it to students with feedback on their progress. Kelvin, he will do a little bit of this worksheet, but quite quickly he'll become distracted. End result for Kelvin, incomplete worksheet. I ask you this, is this truly the best way to assess Kelvin's knowledge and understanding of area and perimeter? I think not. So what if we flip it over and we, we change, the, change the game a little bit? What if we invite the students into the virtual world of Mathlandia within Minecraft? In this game, in this world, there are quests for students to complete based on the concepts of area and perimeter. They start in a free build area where they can explore these concepts. And then they begin their quest. The first quest, a straightforward quest, simple calculation. But as they progress through the quest, they get progressively more challenging. It culminates in students having to find a way to fence in a certain number of sheep in a certain area, each in their own pen of their own area. So this brings in area, perimeter, those concepts, but it also takes it one step further in using those in a real life application. Kelvin, along with the other student, sits there for 90 minutes straight, focused, engaged, working on these quests. Not only does Kelvin manage to stay focused for 90 minutes, he actually completes the quest with the utmost accuracy. This is his actual work from the lesson, and I walk past Kelvin at this point absolutely amazed, because I wrote answers into this map, and he beat me. I sat down next to Kelvin, and I gave him positive feedback on his, on his progress thus far showing his true understanding of area and perimeter. So that story about Kelvin touches on the engagement that Minecraft can provide. But it also brings to focus a second option or a second reason to bring Minecraft into your classroom. And that is it allows students to demonstrate or acquire knowledge in ways that are not traditionally accessible within a classroom. Possibly the most powerful learning experience I've observed in Minecraft happened in a pre-cal maths class. This new course was designed for students heading down a VCAL or an applied learning path. The plan? Give students virtual cash for real world maths work. They could use this cash to buy things in game, do whatever they wanted. There are a series of tasks that students were expected to complete throughout the six month course. They were expected to design, build and cost their house within Minecraft. They were expected to apply for a loan because there was no way they were going to get enough money from the work they were doing to get there. They were also required to run their own virtual business. Alongside these three tasks, students were required to maintain a weekly budget, detailing, income and expenditure. All of these things, maybe not building a house, but everything else is a key skill for life. So, by completing homework and classwork, students were expected to achieve all these things. Along comes Jake. Jake's a year 10 boy, a complete non-engager. However, once we put him in Minecraft, we've leapt that engagement barrier. He's totally engaged, to the point where he's doing extra work to gain extra money so he can get further in the game.
Jake's the first to approach me. It takes him some time, but he's the first to approach me saying he has finalised his costing for a veranda he built. Knowing Jake's history as a non-engager and our need to assess Jake's knowledge, we request that Jake demonstrate how he achieved his final result. Jake takes our whiteboard marker. He goes up to the board. He draws the floor plan of his veranda. And then he details step by step by step very clearly how to calculate the area of that composite shape. While he's describing that, he makes mention of the fact that it was actually building this structure in Minecraft that helped him understand how to break the shape apart to be able to calculate the total number of blocks it required. Not only is Jake showing that he can do composite area, this is above the expected level for that class. While I, uh, while I prompted Jake to display that understanding, this is not always the case when you're working in Minecraft. There are so many occasions where teachers are just a bystander to amazing discussions or interactions happening within that space that just leave them breathless with the amount of learning that these students are showing. I'm going to show you, I'm going to share one more story with you. This example is a comment so subtle and casual that it could quite easily have been overlooked within a classroom had it not been for the extremely deep level of understanding required. A class of senior biology students are in a virtual cell in Minecraft. They can teleport around this cell, gathering information and seeing it from many different perspectives. The aim? To gain an understanding of the role of the organelles in a functioning cell. I thought, perfect. Plenty of virtual world exploration. There's reading and comprehension from the text placed around and there's writing in a real world booklet that we'll later use for revision. It's part way through this lesson that something happened that could not happen in a normal classroom. Josh and Daniel, two boys, friends in the real world, begin fighting in the virtual world. In a traditional classroom, any negative physical contact results in students being removed from the classroom. But, thanks to some of the neat customizations available in Minecraft EDU, the boys can't hurt themselves or any others in the virtual space. So what's the real issue here? The real issue is they're not on task. So what do we do as teachers in this situation? Of course. We ask them quietly to refocus and get back on task. It takes them some time, but Josh and Daniel finally get back to work because Daniel decides to teleport off somewhere else within the cell. And this is where the truly amazing thing happens. Josh pipes up with the comment, Yeah, you better run or I'm going to throw you in the lysosome. <laughs> you all get that joke? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. All right. It, that comment seems so simple. But there is no way that comment can be made without a deep understanding of the role of the lysosome within the functioning cell. And for those who didn't get it, the role of the lysosome is to recycle waste products. That interaction never would have happened had it not been for that initial play fighting interaction in the virtual space. Now, I do want to add a disclaimer here. I don't think anyone should be encouraged to, to, to be fighting, even in a virtual world. And nor do I think students should be encouraged to be referring to, to each other as waste products that should be recycled. <laughs> but really, what an amazing experience to be a part of. Engagement, powerful learning and out-of-the-box interactions like that are just three of the reasons to bring Minecraft into your classroom. Over the fun learning opportunities it provides, Minecraft can be a multiplayer environment. And teachable moments are rife in this collaborative space the ideal location to teach students about positive digital citizenship. There are many interactions in this world, even not so positive ones, that can provide real, authentic moments to discuss with students how actions, even in that virtual world, can affect real world people. Communication, collaboration, problem solving, leadership, all things that have been talked about today. All things that we need to develop in our students. Minecraft offers an ideal location to do this as well. For example, in survival mode, players are required to gather resources, find and build shelter, craft items to survive. It is truly amazing how quickly resources and knowledge are shared by students freely in the classroom. Shared with all so that all may survive and thrive for that little bit longer. It's these interactions that help some of our more reticent sharers come out of their shell in this virtual space, to become leaders in this virtual space and leaders in our classroom. Minecraft has another mode, it's called creative mode. It gives builders 
unlimited resources for doing anything they want. And I can tell you, building in Minecraft develops many spatial awareness skills, balance, symmetry, scale and proportion. It also provides a creative outlet for students, one that doesn't have to require paper, scissors or glue. It also provides a friendly entry point into the world of three-dimensional design. You all know about 3D printers, future of manufacturing. Students can struggle with that leap. I've seen it happen. Tell the students, create me an eye in Minecraft. They'll create you a flat two-dimensional picture of an eye. With a little bit of prompting, they can convert that two-dimensional thinking into three-dimensional thinking. They can create you a three-dimensional model of a human eye in Minecraft with one working tear duct, controllable, so that you can make the eye cry. Not only that, Minecraft can be taken out of that virtual world and put into the real world with 3D printing. It's a very simple task to take a build from Minecraft and export it to a 3D printable file. So, I challenge you today to alter your perception of the value of games in education. Explore how Minecraft can help in your classroom. Bringing Minecraft into my own classroom opened my eyes to the learning possibilities inherent in many games. Now, I'm not saying all games are educational, but I am saying that a vast majority of games has teachable moments that you can capitalise on. If they don't have those teachable moments, they do have really good discussion starting topics that you can have with students. And you might be surprised at the amount of knowledge and the depth of knowledge that students have when you tap into that. So start your journey today, all right? And you too can see the amazing, powerful things I've talked about today. Thank you for your time.